Hi everyone. Very excited to see you. I think we should uh, get started in discussing this topic of interest. If more people join us, the better it will be. My name is Alisa and I'm going to talk about integrating or building yourself into communication network of the company. We've had uh, a number of presentations on this topic. Now I am going to go over what communication networks are available. We don't have to reinvent the wheel there. I want you to try to find your place in those networks and where you want to go. Why did I take the liberty of uh, covering this subject? By, by background, I am a psychologist. So the things I learned in my university fit nicely into the career that I chose in IT sector. When we talk about communication, we imply exchange of information. I'm exchanging information with you. You do that at work. Successful communication is when what I conveyed, oh, when I said is conveyed uh, in the correct way, and I received the feedback. If we have successful communication, we'll have successful collaboration. It's like uh, playing ball together. I remember psychology course at university, communications can be of organizational kind and person-to-person uh, -person kind. Also, communication can be internal and external. External with customers, internal inside your team. Formal and informal communication. Formal is where your team has a PM who communicates with you, you have a lead communicating with you. You build your communication accordingly. Informal communication appears because uh, formal communication uh, doesn't work. And if you look it up, they often use it to use the term uh, grapevine, you know, spreading information by grapevine. And when you control it, it's great because you can uh, throw in something and it might play for your benefit. Formal can be vertical and horizontal or ascending and descending from boss to employee, you know, like figuring out time estimate. As information goes down, it either gains something or losing or loses some of its property. When information goes from uh, top to bottom, Japanese use that a lot. Um, novices are asked to provide uh, information. They have unjaundiced eye. So when you have a newbie and he goes through performance review, you ask him, how are you? So with a fresh look, he will give you all the problems you have because he's under no pressure. Some might be under pressure because uh, depending on your pro probation results, you will either stay or have to go. But I am going to talk about communication networks. There are certain rules that we follow in communication. A communication network describes management elements showing where you are. The simplest network is snake-like. 
it includes letters A and there is A, B and C letters emanating from it and uh, everything goes through A. It's like a, the test department our test team has three individuals. I report to PM about the status. So he collects information from peers and uh, send it, sends it up the chain. As soon as there are more elements in the structure, a center or a node takes shape. And this gives shape to a star-like network with the center that connects all other links. It could be a test lead. It could be a team lead if uh, you have a big team with uh, dev, QR, and so on. You're all together. Why the star shape uh, is great? Because you have the center point, the lead who protects the boundaries, who tells you what to do. I mean, we touched upon the boundaries last uh, yesterday during one of the presentations. So uh, the center protects your bounds, guards your borders. And uh, you shouldn't be worried about what's happening outside. It's a fairly durable and long-term system. But as, as I told you, everything depends on the center point. If the center point is a pro, then the links will be professionals. But if the center point is no good, then you're bound for trouble. Therefore, always try to find the center point that you are happy with, that you will feel comfortable going with. As soon as the center point fails, he wants to go one way or he feels like he's going to fall apart because of uh, pull impact from uh, different links. Uh, we have a horse like a shoe spur kind of shape. So we observe a shift. If we add letters, A goes up and finds a subordinate which covers all operational tasks. A subordinate or what they like to do here is uh, do or point practice leaders. And those like to have subordinates. So practice leaders are uh, tired from tedious work. It's like HQ. He sends information up the chain and he coordinates things on the ground. If you are in a star, you want to go somewhere. It's difficult to shift your center point and you offer him a spur. Don't be afraid to assume responsibility because the laziness of other people is your growth point. Some people find themselves in a comfort zone in IT sector. Well, you shouldn't be afraid. I mean, promote yourself by pushing yourself to the front lines. Uh, you make or try to make progress. The next shape is a circle. This happens when uh, there is a morale flowing high. Uh, typically, that happens um, prior to release. The circle is a pretty open system. Everyone is a peer occupying the same level. But the problem of the circle comes up when someone wants to head toward the center. He believes, well, we are all peers, we're all a team, but I want to gravitate toward the center. 
такое творческое оперативное работа, когда вот надо все вместе, оно все хорошо. То есть как бы все делятся мыслями, все открыты. Well, this is good if you have uh, ideas to share. It helps you to maximize inputs of all participants. That's because everyone is open. When there are too many participants, secondary networks come up. For example, a tent like shape. It's very trendy to have uh, twofold uh, directions. This is like a growth point. So we appoint the practice leader with his subordinates. A tent is when there are some informal links developing between the leads. And the house is when everybody is connected uh, by info flows. Big information networks are the biggest challenge of the house shape. So it's difficult to find the level of liability to one another. When you have found your place, you know where you belong, you know where to go. Apart from the structure of the network, people matter. We heard a lot about different psychological types of people. I, for one, stick to the model that uses emotion, activity, and primary and secondary nature. We're not going to decide who belongs where. You can look it up yourself. I just want to show that there are different personalities. And you can find who you are and who will fit, fit your environment and who you feel comfortable working with. Yesterday, we heard about building a team based on color. What's important is that your center point really counts. If you want to become a center, there are a couple of things that you have to follow. Let's try to identify a few good rules of a good leader. A leader shouldn't uh, be someone who flogs the horse. I mean, you must have met such people. The only thing he misses is a whip or a lash. Well, whips can be used only for horses, but horses tend to die and they have to be changed. You got to believe in your cause. Every time I say that, I remember the football team I'm a fan of, Arsenal. I keep hoping that they're going to they win. Well, they played in the finals recently, but they didn't do didn't do too good. You have to know the science about organization and management. You have to value your time and time of subordinates. You have to be strict but fair, stern but fair. You have to be critical and accept criticism as well. Well, you always have to explain mistakes or discuss problems. So you have to be prepared to be, to be told back. You have to be polite, kind, have sense of humor. You can't get too far without humor. I mean, you can go around smiling making everyone annoyed, or you can stop smiling and then it will be very boring. Now you can give me a smile. You should be able to justify your point of view, marshal your arguments well, and you also should uh, be able to hear when you are to be promoted. Eight traits 
of total losers. You might find yourself or some of your colleagues. Self-deception. If someone has one ex year of experience under belt, they would uh, advertise it as seniors. Uh, they don't uh, advertise it as middle. So don't deceive yourself. Be cautious about your skills and abilities. Low productivity. You always need to have some capacity. I don't like uh, middle tier management too much. They are the people who realize that uh, already they can show off. This is the only thing that they borrow from the top level. But uh, you know, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Unfair attitude toward friends. I mean, due to competition, it's difficult to build good relationships. And in fact, all of these things are interconnected. Don't be like that. Be, be friendly with others. No bad manners. A friend of mine who had been a freelancer for a long time says uh, he can take a few liberties in the office, like picking his nose. Well, let's be honest, it's difficult to imagine him as a lead. Inability to dress well. How do testers look like? How do they dress? Typically, this is a free-willing sort of guy with a beard, with uh, worn-out jeans. But if you want to move forward, your appearances should match the money you're going to make. Being cantankerous or grouchy, people who criticize everything, well, they will uh, be a ball breaker. I'm sure these guys won't, will, will hate my presentation. Unnecessary arguments. Some people are going to provide uh, a plethora of ideas and uh, then they will tell you uh, that, that you don't listen to them. I hope you haven't found any bad qualities from this list. So, moving on. Who sees a young girl in this picture? Who sees an adult woman? Who sees both? This is the simplest test from psychology books on whether or not you can see from the perspective of your opponent coming back to communication networks. When we talk, we shouldn't foist our point of view, but also be able to hear the others. It's not always the case. And uh, we run into problems, failed communication. Why does that happen? Because a lag of time between transmission of information, you start to overthinking it. Therefore, don't be afraid to speak up on time concerning a project, a process. So you should uh, share. Another problem is lack of personality. Everyone likes when they're treated like their personalities. For example, I for one don't like when uh, we receive something on the mailing list and you don't know if it was designed to go to you. Is your feedback really necessary? Well, you seem to be a member of the team, but uh, 
For some reason, the team disappears. A lack of consistency, a lack of system. When the release is up, coming up, you don't know where to find the feedback. Try to have a common system for information delivery. We have a bunch of Skype chats, and you don't know where to react. So this uh, large number of uh, chats, I mean, you go to a conference, and then you have another chat, uh, and uh, you start uh, keeping a zoo of uh, various chats. Not understanding importance of information. You know that you have a bug, but uh, you're unable to say that this, if this is a critical bug, it prevents uh, a successful release or unsuccessful stack for release. Again, you need to focus your attention on some important stuff. The conflict between departments is also an important thing. All of us are people. Sometimes we like other people, sometimes we don't. We have different structures. We have methodology that doesn't fit you well. And often for the transmission of this information, whenever you communicate with somebody, we have the ghost of past relationship. Try to avoid it. And there is a question of how to address it. There are a number of tricks about it. The easiest one is the first name. What is the first name basis? When you start to communicate with person, uh, address him by first name. Do you remember the names of all your colleagues? Great. I'm talking about regular names and not nicknames or handles that might of you have. When you call a person by the name, it's your name. Somebody calls you by a first name at home, meaning that somebody addresses uh, you exactly. It makes it more communicable. When you approach the developer explaining that he's got a bug, don't start with this huge, long complaint that there are plenty of bugs there. Start by addressing him by his first name. The next trick is called the mirror of relations. What is the idea of that trick? When you approach a person, start the communication by smiling at him. As a rule, a person always synchronizes or rather mirrors the information or the feeling that person shows him by approaching when you are smiling at the person. It doesn't mean that you have to be blocking. The person is addressing himself for a positive relationship, he smiles back, and you call him by the first name, everything is great. He is yours, you can do whatever you want with this person. The trick, golden words, these are compliments. The ability to praise the person's abilities. But what is the trick here? The trick is that your compliment, your praise, should not be sarcastic. Because as soon as when you're praising a person, when you're appreciating his abilities, you're next to this person, you please that person. Okay, try to praise the business analyst who sent you a 30-page long terms of reference again. You need to approach him. You're okay, you smile at him, you call him by the first name. What else can you tell him to somehow create a kind atmosphere? Yes, perfect. Any other options? Perfect. What can you tell a developer who once again returned the bug which doesn't work? <laughs> Thank you for trying. Faster and faster, right? Great, it works. So try it, try it. Try it with your friends and relatives. The Another trick is patient listener, when you have to listen to other pe person. What do you need to do here? There is a point here. Somebody calls it a third eye. You look at this point, 
you nod your head, sometimes you can say something like yes, no, mm -hmm. just don't fall asleep. You can prod your head, maybe this is like a thinker's pose. You have to listen. What else can you do? You listen to the complaints of the developers who are complaining with uh, business analysts and business analysts who are complaining of uh, developers and that they are not reading terms of reference and you listen to each other. And another trick called personal life. Try to find out what your colleagues live with, what their hobbies are. You can always start a conversation with the um, some unrelated subject like how did you do cycling yesterday, what the game ended with. It's not difficult, but the person is pleased with that. Only if the person is not suffering from mania of somebody following him or something or observing him, you have to be cautious about that. Aside from communicating with each other, there are other related factors which affect our communication and our movement along communication networks. This is a separate subject which exists that you can be aware of and you can do, go deeper into it. There are non-verbal conversation, non-formal relations, uh, outlooks and other things. But there are problems when looks like we're good, everything is good, we're smiling, everything is normal, but something is not working well. Like we, give, we have problems of barriers, barriers in conversation, barriers in communication. Question is, where does it come from? There is uh, the right effects which affect how we are perceived, how we perceive everyone around us. The aureole effect. This is when the general externality can affect you, or, a, or rather opinion about the person can affect his actions. If there is an opinion that the person is good, then every, all his behavior and activities would be good. If the their opinion, general opinion is the person is bad, then all his activities or actions will be bad. Like when we were discussing what is better for a lead to come from a, from exter uh, outside or inside. The prevention effect, like somebody told, to, told you something about this person, that he's bad or good, and then uh, it sticks to you. If, or if you have known about this person, have known this person for a long time, but you'll be affected by what you were told about this person last time. All these things must be seen, and you have to fight them. You need to do something about it. Or the effect of projecting on other person's own properties. For instance, you're a workaholic. You know all the news on Habra. You want your colleagues to move in the same direction. And you don't understand why not. Like uh, why they read them spam or not reading what is really important. That a person is different. He doesn't need that. He might be a good performer, he will take a task and start testing it. Try to see all of those things and uh, try to get rid of them gradually. Otherwise, you'll have barriers that we spoke about. All of this can lead to forming or raising certain barriers, like barrier of authority, when it, people start to put pressure on you. Barriers in the communication, when your boss, remember the first thing, yeah, the person with a stick, I'm a lead, I told you so, that's why you do it. So, they, with the authority barriers, it's hard to move them around, because for that you need to have serious, strong moral force inside of you, strength inside of you. We'll speak about barriers first and then what to do with that. How can you behave with this authoritarian manager or colleague? Has anybody had these problems before? How did you get rid of that?
I see. This is the most important thing. That's great. Thank you. The authority barrier is when there, are, there is some communication. There is an oral effect also, or ore effect. You have to bring him closer to you by explaining him that you're a lead and uh, manage sure that we are together. We're on the same page. Avoidance barrier. When you know that your colleague, for some reason known, doesn't want to tell you about the status of the tasks, doesn't want to tell you about how he tested something, what what is the status of the release. This is about the avoidance barrier. It might ha be happening because the person doesn't know how to tell you about this. He will believe that if it happens too often, there is a thing when a person enters a, a certain field, he doesn't want to look stupid. That's why he avoids certain questions, questions for himself and questions outside. The barrier of misunderstanding. This is based on the category of what didn't you understand? Like when we are in our own field, it seems to us that everything is crystal clear. Everybody understands it the way I understand it. Why every, everyone is so stupid? But in fact, you need to understand or ask if a person understands or doesn't understand what problems this person has. Um, if you feel that you're on the other side of the barrier, when there is certain misunderstanding or lack of understanding, don't be afraid to ask. You're working for yourself. The more questions you ask, the more information you get, the farther you can move, you'll have new steps along the way, but if you sit quietly, then somebody quietly will uh, push you aside. Another barrier is a oh, relationship barrier is when there are bad, tense relationship between departments when I don't want to hear about Scrum because somebody from another hateful department tells me about this. Here you need to forget about that person, just listen to the information. Or just take the information from the person that you don't like and imagine like somebody else told you the same thing. See whether the effect will be the same or not. So there is an active listening trick also which helps in our communication to avoid barriers or somehow shift the emphasis here. The repetition trick, when a person tells you something, try to repeat the same phrase, his, the same message he told you, so that he could hear from you and confirm that he wanted to say exactly that. This way you will check whether you have heard it right, and the person will hear from you how you heard it, how his problem looks from outside. It's a very good thing. It removes all the unnecessary things. Uh, paraphrasing, a person gave you a huge speech when you don't need to repeat it, simply uh, pinpoint the main message if your opponent agrees with that, that's good. You can actually, there's an additional trick, you can add something from yourself into this thing. We are, are we moving in the same direction with you? Uh, is, it your, is this your problem or not? That we don't have much time for regress? or interpretation and development of an idea. Here, we're having a thing when somebody's sharing a problem with you, you're interpreting it. You're finding the first original problem with that, and you're moving together ahead. And there are a few words related to the interpretation. When you tell the person, for instance, I feel that you want to say this or that. I understand that you're having a problem with that. We can um, find an exit out of this, like this and this. This is where interpretation works. So the time of this presentation is coming to an end. So to make it a bit more fun for you, and the structure of communication is such that people always remember the beginning and the end, and the middle part always disappears. 
I suggest that we do a very interesting test to check the type of your personality. It has been uh, tested on a number of people. Please choose the drawing which you associate with yourself. You consider yourself whom out of this set of figures. Then you can choose a number of the uh, of, of these drawings because you can be a combination and then we'll see who you are. Have you selected? Come on. Chop, chop. We don't have much time left. See, uh, I see everybody so multi-layered. Shut your eyes, open up and uh, look who, who are you? Which picture associates with you? Have you decided? Who is, who is a Ku Klux Klan? Who is number one? No one from now on, right? That's a pity, because this is the leader type. Now everybody tries to find this. Yes, I wanted to select number one. Here is a long text. text. You can read it uh, or take a photo of that. Number two is the responsible uh, executor. Are there many number twos? Ah, great. This is a great find for a department because the tester must be very responsible, very cautious type who always looks for problems. Next one, number four, is a scientist. I was asked the first time whether testing is a science or an art. Intuitive type number five. Um, inventor, constructor or designer, and artist. You will be talking about the cases, we will think hard about what uh, notepad to buy to write down cases in. Emotive one. Emotive is the one who is he is uh, stressing out because of the bugs. Too many emotions. It's good when you have a person like this because always try to measure it against yourself. I like when people. It's great when you have this person, but of course, if after releases you st start stop taking care. Like something is going bad, something needs to be changed. Number eight is insensitive to the feelings of others. On the one hand, emotive, on the other hand, insensitive type. And sometimes you need also to have such a guy in the team which removes all the emotions and starts down with the work. Non, no presentation can work without kittens. We're just moving to the end of the presentation. I count on 100% uh, appearance on in the international level. And thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready to take your questions. Mikhail Palyansa from Sberbank. Thank you for your presentation. In the beginning, you showed two types of chains, and they were different the way I see it, only by numbers. Right here. Did I understand you correctly that that the ultimate aspiration of those people who want to develop towards management is the top end of the spur or there is something more interesting. Yes, there is. Any of this network? Yes, thank you for your question. Any network can be an element of another network. For instance, if we take some separate structure here, who is here? Here we have a snake, for instance. And as a result, the spur, the top of the spur, can be a side element of the star of top management. You can draw the whole structure, the whole integrity, and then you need to understand where you are vis-a-vis -vis of different structures, communicative structures. So in other words, the picture can be 3D, yes. Exactly, depending on what they want from you, you'll be moving towards this direction. 
Thank you. My name is Ekaterina. Thank you for your presentation. My question, perhaps, all these techniques are good to communicate person to person in the office, but I have a distributed team and each day I communicate with them by Skype or Slav and uh, this is not like a person to person communi communication, well person to person but without the live communication, as they can hear my emotions only by voice. Thank you. My first job was when we also communicated with the team through intercom and uh, my colleague on the kitchen I recognize her only by voice, and she didn't know what I looked like. One thing which is convenient here, you can always make faces and nobody will see you. Again, this goes back to, there we had a slide, it goes back to how information is transmitted. You cannot use nonverbal communication here, you cannot use spatial organization. But instead, if you need to see the person, the face and emotions of the person, insist on having video calls and you can manage your voice by showing your emotions through the voice. These are a separate set of techniques, sometimes making pauses, sometimes joking. All these things will fit you well in terms of the name, compliments, personal life, other things. Thank you. The last question. Unfortunately, we're pressed for time. Okay, then. I'll happily answer all of your questions. My name is Yulia. Thank you very much for your presentation. You showed a number of checkpoints to ask questions when something is clear and avoidance. If you ask questions, for instance, for my personal experience, find out something about requirements, but you see but you encounter avoidance when a person either doesn't want or doesn't know about the project and uh, then what can we do thank you for a question again here we need to find out maybe sometimes you can try do it together with the person if he doesn't want it to do it himself and we go deeper with this person if you know that they can do this you simply direct him take a cup of coffee come to him and tell him open up what did they send to you what did you really want to and let's go to the developer together try to include all the stakeholders of your process together because you're in testing this is the most difficult thing you need to put, bring everybody together so that the developer uh, stands up and comes over to you as a business analyst comes over to you as well bring them together for a long time you'll be the center you'll be bringing everybody together everybody would be criticizing you but remember one important thing the la laziness of people around you is the main engine of your progress you run around you will find out how it works make them by all means available to you thank you you can continue talking uh, to Alisa outside in the lobby. Now I need to give the t-shirt to the girl who doesn't see her colleagues.